Hi guys, Adam Steele from Hot Pole Studios here for Pro Mix Academy. And today I want to talk about a new feature in Reaper, which is relatively simple, but is really going to help a lot of people. And that is that there is now an inbuilt, really high quality limiter. Um, a lot of the time, I know there's the loudness wars are supposed to be over and all that kind of thing. But quite often, a lot of heavier, like, rock mixes, that kind of stuff, do sound better uh, objectively, subjectively, <laughs> um, when they are slammed into a limiter within reason. We don't want to absolutely smash the life out of stuff. But now, you don't necessarily have to pay large amounts of money for a limiter that can be actually be uh, combined with a clipper that's already in, uh, in Reaper, to get some fantastic results. And we're gonna look at that right now. So here I am at Studio B, which is of course my home mixing setup. And I have a project with a fairly rocky song. And let's dive in and have a quick look. This is a song called Happiness. You may have seen this on my channel once or twice. And if I go to a bit that's got a big rock kind of setup, it's currently got a limiter on there, which is from a name brand. So there you go, that's sounding pretty big and pretty loud. Now that's using Flatline from Submission Audio, which is one of my favorites, but it is expensive. Now, if you wanna go the homegrown route, you absolutely can. One of the things that Flatline does is that it measures everything in LUFS, which is quite common now. We can now do that natively in Reaper. If your master bus is at zero dB, which it should be, then if you right click on where your meters are on the master, it gives you the master VU settings. And I can just zoom in on this here. And so originally my meters were on stereo RMS because that's how it comes as default. But I changed that to LUFSM, which is momentary LUFS. And so that now tells me at the bottom what for that point of the song, the LUFS value is rather than RMS. It's very similar, but it's weighted to the way that we hear, which makes it quite useful. And I've got my display offset at 14 dB and a red threshold of four. So if I hit play, You can see that with the uh, flat line I'm hitting on the uh, LUFS momentary uh, peaks up to minus 8.5, I think that is, which is very loud. Now let's have a look at our EA limiter, which is on here somewhere. It's just called relimit, not relimiter, just relimit. And like all the stock Reaper plugins, it doesn't look particularly, what's the word? It's not particularly showy. So if I hit play on this, we should see a grand total of nothing happen as it is by default. So our momentary LUFS is already at minus 13. This is quite a loud mix before we even get into limiting, which is, I think, if you're going for a louder mix, that's probably what you want to do anyways. Make sure your mix, without even having a limiter or any kind of clipping, has that kind of louder value. But the first thing I would do is bring my brick wall ceiling down, and most of the streaming services ask for a minus 1 dB. So that alone will bring this down from minus 13.3 to minus 14.3 if I reset that. And from there, I can simply turn up the threshold until we start to get the values that we want. Don't necessarily look for it to be limiting all the time. That's a mistake a lot of people make. You shouldn't be looking at it going, 
it's limiting a lot to therefore it's doing what I want because if your mix is well balanced it shouldn't be doing very much it should be a safeguard rather than something like a crutch that you lean on so just watch And that's it. I brought that down what it turns out to be almost 5 dB. We can see where the snares and the kicks have kind of poked at the the track. And it's pumping a little bit more than I would like, but that's to do with the release down here, which can be adjusted for speed. I like the speed of limiters to be very, very, very fast. Uh, this can go to infinite dB per second, which is essentially a clipper. If I hit play on this, you should see a lot less of this kind of curve as the limiter stops limiting. It should be more of a, a kind of a, a click. So there we go. We can see the the meters are taking up to one and a half decibels off those hits and that's it i don't want to be killing loads and loads off the top of that there is a constant gain mode not entirely sure what that one does but true peak will make sure this is true peak limiting so that if you then make this into something like an mp3 file when it gets converted back, it's not going to magically have these massive um, over-clipping spikes. Now, that works quite well. I've never been a particular fan of just straight limiters, though. I tend to find that they do a thing that I prefer a different method, although the way this works, I can combine the two. I prefer clippers rather than limiters, but you can put a clipper before this limiter and that will give you that slightly crunchy sound on the hits that's very subtle, uh, but just gives you a bit more crispness. Ooh, one thing before I move on, sorry, is the performance here is either low latency or high quality. There's always some latency on this. This is not a live sound designed tool. This is a mixing tool. This is going to introduce some latency because it needs to give itself as many samples, kind of a, a look ahead and notice as possible to give you the best possible result with the least artifacting. But yeah, what I can do with an inbuilt effect from Reaper is this one called Event Horizon, which is a JS. And there are two versions. There's a clipper and there's a limiter clipper. So we just want the clipper and I want to place that on my master bus just before we limit. And so I don't need to worry about ceilings and thresholds here. I can leave everything pretty much stock and I can just turn up the threshold and leave the threshold on relimit a little lower than it was before and just clip into it. And this should give me a slightly more crunchy sound. I mean, I'm not talking full on distortion. I'm talking a little bit and it should give me a tone that I like. But there you go, the combination of those two is fairly CPU efficient, comes with any build of Reaper, Mac, Linux, Windows, you name it. And with a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of tinkering, hopefully it shouldn't take too much away from your mix. Don't overdo it, of course. That's not then the program's fault. That's us as mix engineers kind of trying to fight the loudness wars when we don't really need to look at uh, Ian Shepard's mastering stuff for, for more info on that. 
and yeah this is now in reaper so there you go go grab it play with it before you then decide if you need to use a third party clipper or limiter which has a slightly different sound and maybe something you prefer because at that level it's now about preference rather than how good something is so yeah thanks for watching back to me so there you go Thanks to Promix Academy for letting me make a video about new Reaper stuff. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, my ultimate Reaper course, if you're interested, is available through Promix Academy right now, as is the uh, Audio Essentials course, where we talk about why you should use certain EQs and compressors and certain delays and reverbs and how they work. And that's all available now. Links are in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.